Oh, wrong one. Alright, it's 7 o'clock someplace. We'll go ahead and get started. Let me... Make sure I got the... Right. Not like we have a huge pile of stuff here. Okay, we'll call the meeting to order. And can, uh, let's see. You haven't been here before, have you? All right, well, I'll tap you anyhow. Can you do, it, do the pledge for us? And then we'll do a moment of silence afterwards. I have your honor. Ready to begin? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks, Chief. All right. Um, City Clerk, we have a roll call, please. Mayor Hoffauer? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Bishop? Here. Councilmember Betancourt? Here. Councilmember Carrillo? Here. Councilmember Law? Here. We have a quorum. Great. Um, okay, public comments. We have anybody uh, from the public that would like to make a comment? Seeing none, move it on. Presentation. So who's, uh, which dog or pony? Let's start. Uh, this pony. Oh, the, uh, the, uh, the, 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 um, we are kind of giving you um, an overview of what we've accomplished and what we've done in the past um, year, year and a half since I've taken over this position. Um, and then kind of inviting over our um, other first responding agencies, uh, fire department and the sheriff department. Um, it's going to give you guys also um, their um, work in the past year, year and a half. Um, since I started with the position about February of last year, I want to say, um, I've worked really um, um, intensively with um, our partners, um, sheriff department, fire department, school districts, um, water districts, all of our utility companies, um, county, hospitals. Um, oh, I should probably do this first, um, but it's not working. There you go. Now it's working. Sorry. Um, neighboring cities, Ed um, Edwards, um, Air Force Base, and Caltrans. Um, these relationships have helped with um, cre um, creation of some of our plans, um, some of our um, uh, emergency operation plans, communication plans, um, and will hopefully help with the city's overall response if we do have a disaster because each of these agencies um, provide a lot of resources and we are also resources to those um, said agencies. Um, we now invite the LA County Sheriff Department for their presentation. Good evening, I'm Ron Shea for the Captain of Palmdale Sheriff Station. And we use the incident command system, which was developed by the Fire Department in California. It's now a system that goes nationwide. And we can utilize this system for both police activity and disaster preparedness. And so police activity would be traffic collision, crime scenes, containment operations, and active shooters. The disasters would be earthquakes, wildfires, and floods. And so what the Sheriff's Department does, whenever the disaster or the incident eclipses our ability to both provide service to the community, answering our calls for service, and handling the emergency, we would activate an incident management team. They come up, they bring up their command posts. Um, I have a disaster communicators. That's a gratuitous plug for the mayor. And uh, But we bring them out, and they help us to manage the resources that get pulled up, both personnel, equipment, and supplies. Um, and that they will manage the emergency incident itself, and the deputies will go back to re responding to calls for service in the community to make sure everything's safe. Many times when we get activated, it's usually in unified command with the fire department, CHP, other law enforcement agencies. 
and again we would deal with the disaster that way. Primarily in disasters we're mostly used for evacuations and the law enforcement stuff would be containing a, a crime scene, again evacuating areas so that a SWAT team or other services could come in and deal with the emergency. And that's primarily the extent of it. The, the last year since we've had Nazi, it's been great because she's facilitated our collaboration with our other first responders throughout the Antelope Valley. We've had disasters up here that we've responded to, uh, but she's really tied it into Palmdale and then getting us into the greater part of the AB. So a great addition to the Palmdale team. Thank you, Captain. Um, Chief Sullivan? Should we use a clicker? You want to use a clicker? Which one do I hit? Just the, the next right one. Here? Yeah. Perfect. We'll see if it works. <laughs> see how this goes with the clicker. I'm trusting you. Okay. Mayor, City Council, how are you? Tom Sullivan. I'm your fire chief up here with the Los Angeles County Fire Department. And to kind of piggyback on what Ron's saying, I think we got a good thing going up here with the city of Palmdale. Um, the collaboration that we have with the city and be able to talk, working with Nas, has been great. Ron and I, to to let you guys know behind the scene. We kind of almost talk daily of what's happening and I know Ron and I are talking all the time to bring each other up to date and with Nazi we're talking all the time and making sure that you guys are aware of what's happening in your city and sometimes I'll even let her know what's happening in the unincorporated areas that might be part of your districts or close to it to make sure that she's well aware of what's going on. You see smoke in the air, you see fire trucks. So we are talking, texting all the time, uh, making sure the collaboration's been great. I could read right off this thing. Sometimes I just like talking to you so you're hearing it from me. Um, when we work together with the EOC that you have uh, is awesome. We've already had a couple incidents that have coming up or that have come up that we have been able to work through with your fire department, with your sheriff's department, with all the first responders, and particularly with the city and having the voice from the city. So it's been great. The background of the LA County Fire Department, obviously we've been saving lives more than 90 years. Uh, over the years, our firefighters have saved thousands of lives and properties throughout the Antelope Valley. And as you see, is everybody has a mission statement. And our mission statement with the Los Angeles County Fire Department is to protect lives, the environment, and, and property by providing prompt, skillful, and cost-effective protection uh, in life safety services. Your city of Palmdale, uh, the strength of Battalion 17, and I brought the Battalion Chief uh, Steve Bartram with me, one of your three Battalion Chiefs that you have on a 56-hour work week out here. He is here 24 hours, basically acting on my behalf when I'm not here running the incidents out there. And with the nine fire stations that you have here in the Palmdale area, incorporated and unincorporated area, 24s, 37s, fire station 79, fire station 80, 92s, 93s, 114s, 131s, and 136s with the battalion headquarters or where the battalion chief is housed <laughs> is fire station 93 over on R there. Um, the fire stations that you see that are up there are just part of the Antelope Valley. The great thing about your fire department and when we're all working together with, with sheriffs and with the city is anytime you call 911 as you're well aware and with the services that we provide we could have an army up here in a matter of minutes or in, in the services that we're providing in terms of all of your fire station, all your paramedic squads that are coming. Uh, I'll be you know, talking to you guys shortly here. I'm also looking at putting another paramedic squad up here in the Antelope Valley and also looking at the Palmdale area. The Antelope Valley, our, our strength with Division 5, so I'm the assistant chief or the fire chief, they're calling me now, of Division 5. You can see all the stations, over 20 stations that we have up here with call firefighters that are, are volunteers or they're, they're paid per call up here. And they're, they're actually 112s, 140s, and 157s. Um, we have some in the unincorporated areas, but none here in Palmdale. But again, all we do is call them and they can come out. Some of the special... I when 92s was called. Correct. Is that what? We, yeah. So it's been a little bit, but uh, we are looking at that program to, to really start to bolster that program. Some of the things that you have that we are always working closely with is some of the resources that you guys have. I was going to say a, a, a word, but it's awesome. Uh, and, and to know that when you guys call 911, to know what is coming up the freeway, down the freeway, or from wherever, it's, it's bar none. It's number one that what you have here with the people that you have serving the city. We have your urban search and rescue uh, fire, uh, at Fire Station 136 there. Your urban search and rescue is world-renowned. We've been out on calls uh, 
<clears throat> they got called up for the, the hurricane that we just had. We sent people that are part of the Swift Water Type 1 Swift Water team from 136s. When we had the Ridgecrest, Ridgecrest earthquake, that we all, again, be very lucky and fortunate of how we're all talking during that time that we were talking and we actually sent 136s up there to uh, assist our brothers and sisters up in Kern County. We have a ha hazardous materials task force located at 129s um, right off the, of uh, Avenue M there. Your air operations, heavy equipment teams, super scoopers that are now online. Your air operations, when, when people talk to me as your fire chief and you know, talking with Nazi and Ron knows this, you have a Blackhawk here in your city or close to your city at Fire Station 129 almost 24 hours a day. Staffed, equipped with a paramedic that we are always flying people into the trauma centers, unfortunately AV, but if we have children or pediatrics, we're able to pick them up. Any of your, people are always asking, hey, what happened to the brush season this year? It's because of the good effective work that your Los Angeles County Fire Department with our brush inspections, getting your citizens prepared with ready, set, go, with defensible space, getting out there and doing all. We had in your area, uh, I'm gonna say approximately over five to 700 roughly brush inspections this year that everybody, we went out on every property and everybody that wasn't compliant got turned in, but they're eventually gonna be compliant coming in. But that season is coming and that's what we, that's what we always keep talking about. And anytime anybody sees smoke in the air, her first call is to me or from Ann or from Ron about what's going on. And we are collaborating, collaborating and working. I'll, and I let her know if this is a good one or if not. Um, but when 911 and you get a brush response into this area, which you get with LA County Fire Departments, are seven fire engines, a squad, BCs, you're getting three Blackhawks, you're gonna get two super scoopers, and you're gonna get four camp crews, patrols, water tenders. That's what we are providing out here every single day. And the reason I'm saying that is we're, we're talking the whole time uh, behind the scenes and their first call, Nazi's first call, or Ron to I, will be this is it or this isn't. So we've been very lucky and very fortunate over the last couple of years. Again, our Blackhawks, uh, we have two more Blackhawks that are coming on board. They should be come on station here within the next couple of months with LA County. They're just getting outfitted with, uh, I didn't know that uh, aircraft paint costs so much and it has to go up to Colorado, but those are the things we're waiting on and getting radios and just getting it outfitted for the daily. We now have a FLIR on one of our copters, a forward looking infrared. So when we go out, we're able to map a fire at night and see where the hot spots are at. Outside responding to daily calls and assisting local communities each day, the Los Angeles County firefighters provide uh, assistance nationally. As we had talked about, our urban search and rescue uh, California task force team always is, remains on, on, uh, on station, and they can deploy it at any time within a couple hours. And you've seen them on the news and going out. And we have kind of, uh, we've been to the, to, they've been to Japan a couple of years ago, obviously, uh, with the, they're again helping out with the uh, Hurricane Dorian. Uh, anything that comes up, we could be called on moment's notice. And this is, this is ours, this is your USAR to be very proud of, to know that, hey, these are the people in our community that live here too, that are out there helping the people. And it's a, it's a great feeling. Some of the things, some of the toys, I guess, that we bring, obviously you have within uh, minutes, uh, I house a bulldozer 129 at fire station 129. It's, it's a D eight. It's one of the biggest bulldozers there is. Uh, the reason that I haven't had to come to Nazi or to the city manager or to the mayor or to the council to say to talk about our big fire, we've been doing pretty good. And so our bulldozers will get out there and really circle the fire. They do a tremendous job out there if you've ever seen them. Picture of the hazmat up top up there. You have a level one hazmat here in Los Angeles County. We have one right down the street at 150s in the city, uh, uh, Golden Valley, I believe, and the 14 in the city of Santa Clarita area. A picture of your hazmat right there. That's not ours. That looks like a Cal Fire uh, drop in FOS check there. We do not drop the FOS check, but when we call for it, again, the nice thing, Nas, we got a good one coming up, uh, and we can call Cal Fire on, on the great uh, MOUs and agreements that we have. We can have fixed wing aircraft here, and no, we can have them within 20 minutes, either coming out of uh, Fox or coming out of Hemet Ryan. Just another picture of some of the stuff that we're doing with our camp crews 
out there and in doing evacuations, large animal. And the other thing that we have down there is from USAR 103, which we're going to try eventually to get up here. That's just a heavy rescue tender. Uh, does good for obviously uh, pulling up horses. Uh, we've had that building collapse uh, kind of right on the border. It's able to help us lift beams if there's anything that we need to get into. It's another great tool, another great asset that your fire department, your Los Angeles County Fire Department, has that is all I have to do is call. All the things that we do, we all know what the fire department does, or hopefully we do in terms of uh, structure fires, uh, rescues, and, uh, rescues and emergency medical are one of our biggest things out here is almost 85% of our call volume is due to EMS or emergency medical services. Your hazmats, your, your mobile property fires, your natural vegetation fire, outside rubbish fires, false alarm calls and service calls and just good natured calls. We're just out there to help whatever comes up. And again, I think Ron hit it at the end of his is be very comfortable with the communications that we are all having. And again, I can't overemphasize that it's on a daily basis. If it's not a text message, if it's not a phone call, a heads up or whatever, that uh, that's kind of a good feeling working with the city that has the people in the right places to do the right things. Thank you. So Chief, yes. before you go away, yes, you Mayor. with the, uh, with the, uh, the, the broadband, uh, uh, what are we calling it? Um, uh, oh, I'm drawing a blank on it. Huh? I have to. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Ricks and the and the, there was a they had another name for it too. Uh, they were trying to demonstrate it to us one day uh, down at um, uh, uh, down on um, was it down on Eastern and uh, yeah, it's mo moving all the data around and stuff like that. Um, oh, it's just been a couple of years. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a couple of years. It's this radio system that connects. All the no, not the Rick system. It's, a, it's the First other one. Net. Huh? First net. First net. Yeah. I'm going to have to get back. Yeah, I haven't heard kind anything. Of like Skynet. Correct. I haven't heard anything. <clears throat> That'll be a discussion for probably another day in terms of where we are um, economically with the fire department right now. So I think a lot of things are on hold, especially our radios and communication uh, capabilities right now. We're kind of working on a system that's about 20 years old right now, and so we're trying to update that, but it's going to be, we kind of have an uphill climb right now with the fire department on that. I know that um, we had a first net committee down at, I was on that down at SCAG, uh, just to take a look at all of our cities um, planning uh, and ordinances to make sure we weren't getting in the way uh, of the first net uh, capacities, but I know that at one point there was only like one tower out here, uh, and I think LA had like 70 of them already down in the basin. You know what? I'll get back to you on that, Mayor. I haven't heard any conversations or anything that's coming across real, my desk. It's gotten real quiet. That is correct, and so again, just due to the uh, economics of what's happening right here, as you well know, that's millions of dollars to upgrade the systems. So I think we are working on that to always upgrade the systems, but we're kind of being. Uh, we're working on the system, sure. so I, I haven't heard anything about any kind of upgrades or anything on the LA Ricks system. Correct? Yeah, it's been leaky here since I've been here. Yeah. Okay. Just a comment. Does uh, the bulldozer, have, this bulldozer has a capacity to go straight up hills? You know, uh, the one that, that oh yeah. It, well, I'll tell you what, our, our, our operators are highly trained at, at how they're, they're hired. And some of the places that they get themselves into, the attitude and the pitch that they put these things on, uh, it, it depends on the operator of where they're at. But I've seen them do some pretty crazy things, uh, and it, it's it's the side hill stuff that if you ever want to ride one time, and I'm around, come around on a side hill one time, and you know, and they just have the smiles on their face, and you're going, and you're, you can't hold on tight enough as they're pitching. But yeah, they I've seen them do uh, just awesome things up there. Just we had a fire. Uh, near the aqueduct, Not up, not this year, but the year before, 4th of July. And uh, so I'm seeing that this uh, bulldozer's coming up and then all of a sudden going straight up the hill and I said, man, this guy's gonna flip over. I mean, it was like straight up. 
Oh, believe me. It was crazy. Oh, believe me. <laughs> and I know it's our helicopter. I mean, they're, they're true professionals at what they do. And there's sometimes even myself, when I get in and take a ride, I got to hang on and make sure that my, my <laughs> harness is on pretty tight when they're doing that stuff. Oh, so, yeah, it's so, all, so oh, believe me. It's not tight enough sometimes. Is this is the piece of equipment you have pictured here. Is yes, that's that correct. And so that's out of Fire Station 129 on a daily basis. And um, we're, we're, we're coming up to every day's fire weather up here, it seems like. And... Uh, we can say it with a smile on our face because as firemen, when we do our weather predictions and we always come up as almost being extreme every single day because, you know, it's going to be windy in the AV and we all, it's always windy out here. That's a breeze to us out here. That That's not wind as we've seen. So uh, things are drying out. We're gearing up for the Santa Ana's are going to be starting up as we all know. And I, again, we always are talking about fire weather, the PSPSs that we're having with Edison coming out with doing the power shutdown grids. We are talking all the time to make sure that everybody's aware of these things because that could kind of throw us in a tail, but we'll be able to handle that. Um, and we've been trying to get out there with the, the Ready, Set, Go program throughout Palmdale, working with my CSL, my community service liaisons, to make sure that we're out there handing out the brochures, getting the pamphlets out for the Ready, Set, Go program that's out there. What procedures are in place uh, in the event of a catastrophic earthquake? You know, since we're so close to the Santa Cruz uh, Fault. Yeah, we're, we're on the earthquake fault out here on the Santa And we all, like, again, we're all here. Was, I think the Ridgecrest woke us all up there on 4th of July. Um, we are working diligently, working with the EOC. I have a battalion chief, Gary Harris, who's kind of my liaison, working with the city when I'm not able to be here, working with Nazi and Ron and everybody on working with the EOC. The L.A. County Fire Department, we also, not to be confused, we also, in the event that we lose, we're going to think of the big one. We lost all communications. We're shut off. You guys go to division communication? We do. Protocol. We go to, so in that division, I have an EOC, or I hate to use that, I have a dispatch center in the event that, that the captains or that the respective sheriff stations lose their communications, we would send liaisons and I would run the battalion or I would run the division out of 129s and then activate however we needed to do to work out, activate the EOCs, get liaisons. And we've been having meeting after meeting, working on coming up with a training program, uh, coming up with a live exercise on, on all types of risks, everything that's coming up. Because there may be a time that you activate the EOC, but we still have to be able to answer those calls on the PSAP to work with your EOC to have a liaison. So we have a plan all in place and he knows where he's gonna go. I know where I'm gonna go to run the division. And Nazi knows where, again, as we're talking. We had a little thing, if you, if you were aware, a couple months ago about with the, P, the, the PSAP went down. We're going to talk about it. Oh, we are? Yeah. I don't want to steal her thunder there. You're stealing there. my thunder here. I don't want to steal that. So <laughs> I can't, I, I think we're here to kind of, uh, we know the big ones are coming. And and I, I, I can speak, I, I think, for all of us with L.A. County Fire Department in your city. We can train all we want. And we. this is what we do. Um, I personally have probably been on some of the biggest incidents that you've heard, read, did, and we always are able to get through. There's that first 10 minutes of, okay, setting everything up. But our, our main intentions is that the citizens are safe, that we do the right thing to, to make sure the citizens are safe and, and to have a plan. And we have a plan. It's almost like the break glass. We have a plan on everything, whatever. We've had our floods here with the monsoons that came in with the lake incident out there. We've had minor earthquakes. We've had power outages. We've had the crown fire. We've had the station. We've had all these things. And I think working in the collaboration that we are, you, you can be pretty confident that we'll be able to handle anything that happens within your city. One of the memories I have of the 71 quake is on a morning of um, going to register at Cal State Northridge, register for the school. And, on the, and we went, traveling from Van Nuys to Northridge. On the way over there, we saw several fires, probably because of um, maybe gas pipes that, that, that didn't get shut off automatically. How, how prepared are we in Palmdale as far as that's concerned? We have a lot of housing that's been built back in the 50s, 60s, and so on. How prepared are we for, for gas that might rupture and fires resulting? Well, that, that's probably a case-by-case -case basis. Um, what we try and do is provide the preparedness with the LA County website. You know, that we have everything out there on how to secure your home, um, you know, properly, how to turn off the gas and when to turn off the gas. Um, or the, if to turn off the gas. 
That's correct. And that's, that happens a lot too, because people will go right to turn off the gas, turn off the electricity, and they really didn't need to do it. And they reactivate the gas and now they created a fire. I, I think that, I, I don't know if I could quantitate, you know, give you an answer because uh, it's all out there. I know the gas company is doing a great job in terms of trying to educate the, their public. And, and I get it at my home and see the pamphlets and read them. Um, we might be a little bit more ahead because we know when to turn it off. I think there's great education out there with the gas companies, with the cities that are putting it out, with LA County Fire Department, with our website, you know, gas hazards, electric, what to do after the earthquake. We're, we're almost ready. We're, we're all prepared. And I just think it's uh, when it does happen, I don't know if, if hopefully they heed the warning and they know what to do because we're, we're going to be doing our, they always tell us to be prepared for three days. I think in the AV, we're going to have to be prepared for three weeks by the time. I know one of the things that, uh, Having gone through Northridge, uh, we were out there doing a dance in the middle of the street when that thing hit. And um, uh, nothing gets your attention faster than watching your engine dance, mm -hmm. you know, oh, out yeah. there. But um, we could always tell where DWP was turning circuits back on because we were, we were in the South Valley. We were up at Northridge Meadows, that kind of stuff. But over the next several days, you could look out across the valley and you can see where they turned on the power because that's where the fires were. Another fire. Because, because they turned the, turned the circuit <clears throat> back on and the lamps were laying over or something was laying on, and that's that's where the problem would be, you know? So um, yeah, that's, a, that, that's a real valid point, and I just think that uh, um, I think we all need to do a better job of, of getting the public educated on uh, sometimes you need to shut stuff off, but, you know, uh, the real key is being careful how you turn it back on. That's correct. That's where the problem comes And from. again, I think the gas company does a great job working with them in the educational programs. It's just that people go and look at them, and, and I know it's part of the bill, and they put it in with flyers. They're trying to do everything they can, and we, we kind of pick up the pieces at, at the end or what have you and come. And, and I know the city probably has something going on. To, education, 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 education. Is yeah. I think it's just that people read it and do it and, uh, it's, it's easy to overlook this stuff especially because oh, yeah. we're on a fault line but if the one thing that's proven true it's the preparation through education is a lot less costly than learning through a tragedy that is and, and we speak that with you you know and just trying to get it out it's just getting we do as much as we can with the fire department and get out there and you've seen our displays and when we're out there um we have handouts for everything it just depends on on what they do with those handouts on how to read them Ron, can you uh, help us with uh, a couple other things here? Um, Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. So, you got the Reader's Digest version presentation there. Keep it simple. Keep it more. He called me up. Hey. Yeah. Um, <laughs> my job. So, we've got a lot of specialized stuff up here. Uh, you know, um, Tom's guys have got a lot of their toys and stuff on site here. Um, that's one of the questions that I get a lot is, how long does it take us to get the other specialized law enforcement resources up here? Short of setting up a containment, uh, but when you start talking about you know, SEB, I know a few years back they moved all the canines down below. Uh, uh, I know we have Air 5. You want to talk about some of those other specialized resources that, uh, that are available and that, and that um, uh, what's the, I mean, what, what, what can we expect as far as the... Uh, I mean, do we have a Bearcat up here? Or does we do. Each, each area? We do have a, a Bearcat at Palmdale Station, and we can mobilize that. Again, primarily our, our role in these things are, for the most part, it's going to be a containment and evacuations. And we can mobilize deputies. They just jump on a radio car, and they come zooming up. So we borrowed from Lancaster and Santa Cruz stations frequently for a variety of things. We might only get one or two deputies at a time. A lot of times that's all we need to hold the spot, again, so we can free up our deputies to go handle calls to service. We also have a lot of people that live in the community. That uh, A lot of our canine handlers, quite a few of them live up here, and so they're able to mobilize right from home and help us with scouting missions and inquiring further. When uh, we need to get a SCB team up here, if they have to drive, it could be an hour and a half to get them up here. But when it's an urgent thing, we'll put them in a helicopter and we'll fly them up. And that happens pretty regularly. So uh, our uh, Air 29 we have up here, right? We share yes. that with Palmdale, Lancaster, Santa Clarita. In uh, North County, correct. Okay. Santa Clarita through Lancaster. Okay. And then uh, I know we have Air 5. Mm -hmm. 
Air 5 is going to be countywide. Uh, we have our paramedic on that one, and they will go wherever they're needed. So they spend a lot of time in, in the Angeles National Forest, uh, but a variety of other places. When there's a medical transport, they've come up here, and they've helped transport down into the basin. Okay. And then um, as far as uh, I, uh, you guys, uh, county fire, you uh, all of the... Um, uh, Mobile command post stuff that comes out of uh, Eastern. No, uh, Mayor, we have one at uh, each each bureau, each division will have, or I'm sorry, each North Ops has one, Central Ops, East Ops. So it comes out of 143s, 126s, Santa Clarita area. So the mobile area should probably be here within 20 minutes, 30 minutes traffic. Okay, and then you you've got the you've got the the uh, Winnebago thing. Right, we have a command post at Palm Station. Have the, you have the Fritos truck? Yes, it's a beautiful thing, circa 1985. Yeah. You know? But um, uh, so we'll, we'll mobilize that when we have an incident out here. The uh, Emergency Operations Bureau, they have the big 50 foot trailer, uh, 43 foot trailer, also a communications trailer. And again, we've had some major incidents up here. Well, they, they will bring that up here. And it, operation usually goes through the night and then they'll just package it back up and send it back out. Right. So okay. yeah, but that was a good meeting in my initial Yes it was. And, uh, yeah very positive. You were the yeah. MC, I guess and handled all the Christmas kind of thing but I will work for food. Great yes. participation by the public and yes. uh, it, it was handled in a very very uh, let's say very positive manner. Yes. Uh, I think the public uh, could see what the sheriff's about and, and what he wants to do for the communities and so on. And, and it was good to see that both of our captains uh, were well appreciated by the public as well. Indeed. Uh, the sheriff was very pleased about how it went. He, he's done 18 of these town halls. He is planning to make his way throughout the whole county uh, each year that he's in office. So he will come back. It's going to be an annual event for him, which is good. The public does look to see him and talk to him, engage with him. He's been up here for other speaking engagements, and he's usually sold out the room, uh, which is good. So he's a big draw, and, uh, uh, and it was just, very informative. Just want to get a little bit more lead time on it in the future, you know, so we kind of know what's going on. Okay. And I had already responded, uh, those guys got me a hat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know what, they're everybody's hero. Yeah, he's my hero, too. Look, he's, he's camera ready right now. <laughs> <laughs> but that was good. Yeah. Thank you. It was. Thank you very much. Yeah. I knew I had these guys to handle it, so. All right, so back to Nazem. All this right. point, right? Yes. <clears throat> so, um, Captain Schaefer and uh, Chief Sullivan kind of um, mentioned all the great work that they do um, providing services to the public um, here in the city, but um, it's, it's really important to remember that we also have um, uh, response capa uh, capabilities in the city. Our public works. Um, our building officials uh, during disasters are, ve are very active um, and um, if you look at that um, I'm going to use this thing apparently there you go um, so in emergency uh, preparedness planning is a big part of what we do and the very first step in planning is bringing the right players um, into the room when I came here uh, one of the first people that I built that connection with was um, um, our very own public works uh, guys. Uh, so Bruce was a big part of how I started here. Um, 